All right, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. I have Brian back with Bella's Army. Honestly, man, I think a lot's changed since the last time we spoke. Um, you know, I, from what I see on Facebook, there was uh, something that stood out to me. Um, I just want to get it out early, man. What was up with that fifty thousand dollar mural that you guys decided to take on, man? Why don't you tell me how that <laughs> how that happened? <laughs> yeah, that that's a good question. So. Um, we just got that opportunity that we stumbled upon um, somebody, it was a real estate developer from New York. Um, they found us on Google. So we do a lot of like heavy digital advertising. So um, that's how we got our foot in the door, at least for the conversation. And uh, what most people would do whenever they get that phone call is just say like, <laughs> I don't know, nah, like, I'm like saying how to no. do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which um, usually that's kind of like how we'd approach that conversation too. But um, we, what we did that's kind of different is uh, we have a sub team who's kind of like on standby 24 seven for like anything large. So if it's out of our normal wheelhouse, um, we typically go to them. So, um, our rule of thumb is we say yes to almost everything, uh, within reason, of course. So we just handled that conversation with complete confidence. We said, of course we can do it. <laughs> Um, and then from there, we just uncovered their needs, their wants, um, got down to the nitty gritty and um, just made the experience fr frictionless for them. Um, yeah. So we even collaborated wow. with like artists and design uh, firms to have mock-ups done as well. Insane. So what's awesome, like what I got from that is like really fake it till you make it. And uh, that was probably your first time doing it. But uh, I love how you said, you know, as a business, we came across confident, um, maybe behind the scenes probably a little scary, probably a little crazy because that's a big project. And for those of you who haven't seen it, look up Bella's Army mm -hmm. on Facebook. Um, amazing, uh, amazing project. Something that I would 1,000, 100 million percent say absolutely no to just simply because I don't have the resources. I don't have the know-how. Um, but with your mindset, I, I, you know, normally I'm telling people to niche down, but I'm super all for what you're trying to do because you've already niched down when you, I remember you were just doing cabinets and you kind of expand from there, but now that you got the systems down, man, anything's possible. So you had the right team. It lined up. You, you, you set a great price point. That's, that's, that's interesting as well. Uh, but the mock-ups, that's interesting because dude, when you do a mural like that on a commercial building, like the angle's got to be perfect. So drawing it to scale, like that's something that would worry me is like, you know, what if like that, what that one angle was like down 10 degrees, you're going to see that from the street, man. Were you worried about that at all? Um, not really. And to be very honest, my involvement was like almost nothing. Like I was only there for one day. Um, our project manager just helped facilitate it all. Um, the measuring process, like the, the team that was doing it, they literally just spent like a day measuring each section and that was it. And then they just went with it. Um, we only had one design alteration, like the center was a little bit off at the very end. So, right. um, again, we just like brought the tape down a little bit, addressed it. It took like six hours to do it. <laughs> wow, dude. Amazing. So yeah. super cool, man. I just, you know, I had to get that out of the way. Cause that was something that, uh, you know, I, I was paying attention to it. Really cool. You don't really see much of that, a, a project at that scale. Um, so, so let's talk about, um, really, you know, what, what direction your business has, uh, transitioned to, man. I know, um, you know, you and I have mutual friends, uh, you have, uh, you know, you're doing a lot of cabinet refinishing. I, did you just open up an office? Um, we have two offices now. Yeah. So we have one that just houses all of the actual office space. And then we have like another, it's almost like a residential house that was spec for industrial. So, um, the person that owns this office building, they own that building. It's actually next door. So okay. that's where we spray right now instead of physically having a big warehouse. And then we just order all of our stock and our inventory there. So you're actually using a residential property to actually do your, uh, your, your spraying. What, why not, yeah. why not use a shop? What's the benefit of doing it in, in a residential property? Well, the shop, um, we're waiting. So like, we're just playing the long game and like, uh, I really want to buy a building and physically have that be the central hub of everything. So like offices would be in there, uh, spray zone would be in there, big uh, parking lot for trucks and stuff like that. Right. So since we weren't at that point in time to be able to do that, you know, doing cabinetry to do it right, you can spend a lot of money investing in your spray facility. <laughs> so we didn't want to do that on something we didn't really like own, um, which forced us to look for plan B and plan C. So um, the residential thing, 
uh, we, we just like our, like what got us from point A to point B <laughs> was doing things unconventionally and just getting pretty right. creative and um, yeah. just See riding the profitability <laughs> wave until we yeah. can get to a point where we can. The landlord didn't away. care that you were spraying in there. Um, I just said that we'll fix whatever we don't or don't make. <laughs> right. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty cool landlord, man. Yeah. But ultimately, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I like that. I like that mindset. You know, it's very interesting, you know, just again, the gritty of starting a business and not making excuses and just going forward, you know, things that I admire, um, because, um, business doesn't have to be perfect. Some people say, you know, I have to get the perfect, uh, you know, building to get going. I got to get the perfect, you know, X, Y, Z. I have to have done a smaller mural to take on a freaking massive project. And, <laughs> the mindset that you have is just go, you know, um, and, uh, you know, fail forward, I'm sure is something that you've heard before. Um, but it, it's really cool to see, uh, how, how your business operates. So in terms of, uh, the team, what's the team looking like now? So team wise, um, we're up to about eight people in house. And then you were hiring a project manager a, a little while back. I think it was a couple months ago. I saw you put out some, uh, just some content looking for some leadership Were you had, were you able to find that? Yeah, yeah, that it was actually one video we just posted and just uh, ran on Facebook. Um, we got interviews pretty quickly after that, and then we found one PM for that. So he started out actually painting, and then uh, after about like a month or two, he transitioned into PM, and that's what's honestly made this year pretty nice and comfortable. So, what did you see in him that made you want him to be a project manager? Because you, did you hire him as a project manager and make him paint for a little while, um, or did you just see? Yeah something different in him that uh, you wanted to expand upon in terms of leadership? So we hired him as a project manager, but had him paint first. So uh, we just had like two, two actual offer letters. Wait, has he never painted before? Never painted. Yeah, there you go. That's how you do it. Yeah. So, I mean, from there, it was just kind of like his tenacity, competency, and like what, like, did he have the drive to physically want to like, be able to get stuff done um, was his backgrounds, you know, somewhat management experience, um, nothing crazy, but just foundational stuff to where like, Moldable. You know, it, if he can critically think and kind of like help facilitate and put out some fires here and there, that's honestly all that we were really looking for in that. Yeah. So he was moldable, essentially somebody that you can fit into um, a system. And when I say system, man, that's pretty much the reason why I wanted to reach out to you today. Um, you're wearing a logo on your hat as I am. Um, we're both system, uh, system oriented contractors. I think everyone should be, we're just the ones that like to provide our systems for the greater good of the, uh, of the community. Tell me about what, uh, painting business systems is. What is that? What is that? You know, let, let's start off with this, man. Let's start off with why and, uh, and then what? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm going to start off by kind of like telling a little bit of a story because I don't think I've ever really shared this with, with much people, okay. but um, during our scale process of growing our painting company in Pittsburgh, which is Bella's Army, um, we lost a lot of money in the scale process. And um, you know my style, you said it at the beginning of this, that we're very just, just speed to market, let's just get there, let's figure it out and adjust as we go. Um, I had that same uh, thought process whenever we started right. the company. So obviously going from nothing to like something, there's a huge risk factor if you approach it that way. Um, so we had a lot of, like I came from a company that taught me how to do sales, but not production. So right. the fact that we chose to go in-house, tons of inefficiencies, like culture wasn't good. It wasn't a good environment. Um, I wasn't really charging as much as I could have been. And there was just a lot of stuff that it was consuming my day-to-day -day, like time spent in my mental uh, capacity. So uh, stacking inefficient production on top of like a toxic team with not having a, a enough people. Um, it did, I didn't have any time to physically spend doing the systemization of the company to make sure it was efficient and profitable. Right. Um, so we, we were actually like, it was at least $30,000 in debt um, after oh, wow. that year. And we, we, we didn't was make that from money. labor or was that from paint? What was the majority of that debt for? Completely labor and just, we just lack of cash flow. Yes. And, and, and we weren't thinking big enough. Like we only did 250 that year. Right. Wow. Yeah. So um, that was like the reason I kind of bring that up is because that kind of like, like going from then till now, we, we figured out a way to kind of like approach it differently to where like we can just like, like a snapshot of the company now, 
everything's systemized. Uh, we have automation set up. Um, we leveraged our personal time and empowered the, the right people and put the right people in the right seats um, to where everything's just getting done. It's super efficient, seamless. Um, we were very aware of like what percentages were like a little high and a little low. So like, like even like material and paint, I think the first year it was like 27%. It was ridiculously high. Yeah, it's high. And now we're down below 8%, which is wow. super crazy. And like we just yeah, say an I mean, incredible amount of Way money. low. But is that for cabinets or is that for uh, for residential painting? Everything. Really? That's awesome. Yep. So so we just like, like things like that, um, like our net income now, it's 17 to 20%. Um, overheads uh, comfortably at 30 and lower. So just things like that. Um, we... Well, actually, okay, I think it's important to touch on this too because sure. the power of what a system can do, it, like, I haven't made a phone call once this year <laughs> to, like, answer wow. a lead, schedule something. Um, we've structured it to where, like, everything goes to a separate number. There's automation for texting and emailing. Everything is pre-scheduled. Um, my, that freed up my time allocation to where, like, I can physically time block time to structure the company in a way where I can yeah. systemize and grow it. Right. Um, and then like, I think I only, it, it was, it's less than 10 job sites the entire year that I was even on. So wow. I, I'm not even in the field at all. Um, I manage from a distance, the entire company. Right. So group chats, like, like there's certain things we did to leverage my time spent to focus on recruiting team structure, systemization and scale. Right. Um, but that's so, why we started. So let me kind of just slow down because I want to kind of hit on some things. I want you to continue, but where, where, where Brian's going with this is that, you know, a lot of, a lot of people start off in, in assuming roles, right? When you first started, you were assuming the role of probably production. You were painting, right? Were you painting? <laughs> yep, painting? Yep. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. painting. Right. And then, you know, you assume the role that's once you graduate, you assume to full-time salesperson, like half and half admin, um, you know, project manager, then you find someone to come in and do that. And then some people just stop there and they don't actually think um, that there's another place to go. You know, maybe they'll get a salesperson in there and they'll just kind of feel like they just have to continue to just, you know, do what they did before, expand, maybe run another crew while that crew's gone. I don't know what it is, but they forget that there's a CEO role. And um, if you look at the definition of a CEO, really the CEO's number one job is to optimize uh, and, and essentially you know, eliminate waste and look at the numbers and all those things. So essentially you're, you're in the CEO role of your company, which is, which is really admirable because, uh, you know, that's the peak, man. You're actually enjoying what it's like to own a business. So you have all the free time, your systems are running, you're monitoring them. You're looking at areas that you can find weaknesses. You're looking at areas you can cut costs. Um, and I think with that bird's eye view, that's when the compound effect hits. It's like, you're just hitting win after win, after win, after win. Um, and, uh, it's gotta feel great. Right. I mean, at this point in time, coming from a place of debt and, uh, you know, things like that. Can you elaborate on that? Um, yeah, um, it, it, it does feel pretty good. And, um, it's interesting though. Cause like, even once you get to a part, certain point, like I'm still doing a lot of sales, but kind of looking at it and taking a step back, like doing sales is technically a full-time role and you're working in your business, not on it. So there's they're, they're just a never ending loop of just like, you know, you got to check yourself every now and then to make sure you're allocating your time the right way, depending on what your overall goal structure is. Yeah. Um, wow, man. That's huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So, but, so tell me about, I want to hear about your program because, because you're, you, you have the passion behind it. You've experienced it. What, you know, what is painting business systems or is it like one-on-one -on -one coaching? Is it a, you know, is it an online course? What, what can, what, what can you elaborate on? So um, the painting system blueprint it's basically a service-based company. So, so the main offering is physically doing a blueprint for your company. So um, it is a 12 month package offer. Um, Cause like the, our goals, like we would like to work with somebody for a whole year to get to the entire company. So every department. Um, so what that looks like, it's like comparing it to an online course, like an online course, you buy it, you typically have like a platform, you go in there, you watch video content and it's up to you on your personal time spend to one, consume the content, and two, time block action from the content <laughs> and implement, create, and stuff then like that. Create, like, yeah. There's a huge time spend there. Um, not a lot of people are good at going from point A to point B. So the whole premise is like, this is actually why we started creating the company this way. Um, 
we realized there's not a lot of people, like a very low percentage that's very comfortable doing that while juggling every other full-time role within the company that they're building. Right. So um, the whole idea is like the main offer every single month we sit down and like we would fully systemize and create custom SOPs, checklists, like we would do the creative um, after consulting with you on kind of like what your vision is. So and we would take give it somebody to you. who's working by themselves into the system or do you prefer to work with individuals that have at least removed themselves from production? So there's two things. So like another offering, um, we have like a, it's a Facebook group now, but it's going to evolve into something that different. Um, but it's a very minimal um, financial thing. And if it's a one man show, you don't have all the money in the world to like put towards something like that. So we have an offer that has like all of our current SOPs for Bella's Army within that group um, in file sections. Right. And um, that's meant to get somebody to like the 250 to $500,000 mark without much of our physical input. Once right. you get to a certain point where you have enough profitability stuff uh, or like money to work with, right. um, that's whenever the blueprint makes more sense. Because going from 500 to a million and like a million to like 5 million, that's where it takes collaboration. Um, or at least just like, like if somebody's strength is production or training, they're not really good at the systemization and scale outsource it. <laughs> That's the whole yeah. idea behind that. So essentially like, you know, when I, when I, when I ask that, it's just simply because there's just such a vast majority of individuals that are in, um, or in that stage, man. And you know, what, uh, what, what I would like for you to do is elaborate on maybe some action steps because, you know, as much as I'd love to hit on the guys that are wanting to hit 1 million, 1 1.5 million there, you know, those guys are great, you know, but really, you know, when we scale back, you told me early on, Hey, I was in $30,000 worth of debt. I'm fully consumed. You had to hit the restart button. And what I always like to tell people is like, if you were a franchise, um, you know, and, and you were given a set of instructions by the corporate office, it would not, they would be like, Hey, you have to do this, 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 and this, here's the formula. Problem is a lot of the people don't have any, a formula. They don't have a guiding light. They don't have a a lighthouse, man, you know, something to, to go towards. So if I came to you and said, Brian, listen, you know, I, I, I love what you're doing. Um, it's just me. Can you kind of elaborate on some, maybe some action steps that you would take or that you would give to help someone get from that point to at least a point to where coaching would make sense and at the cost of which that I'm sure you, uh, you deserve to be charging. Correct. Yeah. So what I would say is just like, if you're a one person show or let's just say you have like one or two people, um, know the numbers in, in the back end of kind of like what it looks like to get from point A to point B. So in other words, like knowing that gross target 50%, maybe 45% like on the lower end is a nice target. Like that's good to know. And then gross knowing target the target on every job, right? Correct. Right. And like, like overhead, it could be as high as 30. Some people have are super, super low and have almost no, no overhead. Can you elaborate um, on what overhead is? And I'm doing this because I really want, you know, some people don't understand these concepts. So let's kind of break them down a little bit. Yep. So like, for example, if you have in-house teams, then vehicles can be an overhead. Gas, um, advertising, that's an overhead. So everything digital or anything like that. Um, it could be educational material. It could be interest expense on debt. <laughs> um, it could be like just everything besides managers, material right. and labor. So mm -hmm. in other words, overhead is anything that cannot be directly variable to a job. Like, so in other words, like it won't, it doesn't matter how much work you do, that expense is still there. Is that with, are you okay with that, that definition? There's that kind of alignment with the way you categorize overhead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And like the way I picture it too, uh, if you look at 100%, you subtract how much you pay your teams, how much you buy and paint, and then everything else is overhead. Yeah. That's the easiest way to look at it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So awesome. Great definition. So, so really, you know, what it comes down to is painting system blueprint.com. You got the website up. Um, tell us what to expect, man. How do we, like, you know, when we sign up, you know, let's say someone's ready to rock, man, they want to take you up on this offer. You want to, you know, what is it, what does that look like? So um, it starts off by having just a strategy call. So it's like a, uh, there, there's like no pressure at all involved within that first thing. It's literally just a conversation with us and our staff um, to basically just kind of get an idea of like what your business looks like. Um, like, are you making good money? Are you not? Um, are you doing this? Like, like, 
are, are, is your time, like what's your time allocation look like? So it's a full analysis of kind of like what's going on. Um, from there, we'll be very uh, straightforward and be like, okay, it makes sense to do Blueprint or no, it makes sense to do the um, ultimate startup team. Like there's certain things we can just recommend or we can just give straight advice because everybody's yeah. different and there's different. Everyone's different. So they can go to paintingsystemsblueprint.com, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. figure that out and and they'll work. Probably you're, you're just starting, so they're going to get you before you grow and they can't get you. So I'm sure that you're going to be heavily involved. Is that true? Uh, for now, yeah. But um, uh, probably like... As we head into the winter time, uh, we will start scaling the staff in the back end on that. Um, we're going to have like system strategy coaches. So like every person would be paired with a specific strategy coach for 24 gotcha. seven support. Um, but yeah. And it's, are these industry, are you looking for industry leaders? Like people that have already done it or are these people you're coaching on your system to just pretty much make sure that the system that you're coaching is in alignment with, uh, you know, is that what you're looking for mostly? So, so um, basically the blueprint offer, it's mainly just people that we kind of integrate that try and get people integrated with something that's replicable to our system. Got it. Um, another offer on top of that is we do have a separate coaching offer. So that could be where industry experts come in. We kind of have a collaborative experience. And for people that go through the blueprint, um, again, we're getting kind of down the road, but there's something we're calling PSP uh, rebrand. So it's very comparable to how our franchise style works, except it's not a franchise. We basically partner with you in terms of um, systemization, coaching, uh, giving you all of the transparency on like marketing, what's working, what's not working. Um, just basically giving you instructions like do this, do that. If your goals are this and this. Is this a you know, partnership format? That. Basically, it, it's structured in, in terms of just like um, percentage of total revenue. Yeah. Is um, your goal to franchise? Do you want to franchise at some point? Um, I probably would franchise Bella's army. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. and like, again, that's like the vertical or like the horizontal integration. That's kind of like what we want to do with too. Cause you know, like everything that we're doing with this company, we're doing with Bella's army right now. <laughs> you know, it's cool, man, to hear just, you know, and, and, and I like to bridge the gap, man. I'm the connector, man. That's the way I see it is that I, I try to bridge the gap between those that are really, really maybe first starting out or just, dude, there's some people that just can't get over the hump, man. And then when they hear guys like you that that are operating on all cylinders, man, I mean, everything seems to just be working. You're you're already setting your sights on franchising. Like to franchise a painting business is like the ultimate goal uh, for so many. And, and it's just like, you know, um, what's the difference between you and them, man, in your words? Perspective. Because like, I'm a 26 year old guy. I, I don't know a lot. Um, you don't have to know a lot. You just have to be comfortable putting yourself in daily situation that is uncomfortable. <laughs> and can I, say, can I give you what I think the difference is? I like perspective, but mm -hmm. there's another word that I'm thinking of, man, it's execution. And, and, and it takes, it takes somebody that number one is a self-starter. I could tell you're very self-disciplined. Number one, your self-discipline has to be super high. Number two, your confidence has to be super high and your own ability to do it. And like when I go back to that initial uh, that initial piece of a conversation that we had early on, you had you exude the confidence that you got it like and, and, and to, to customers, to anyone that that is comforting, especially in this industry. That's number two. But but I think number three, man, that ability to actually execute something and actually put put it together and actually do what you first of all, thought that you wanted to do and then actually put it to action and convey um, what I would I would think the vision is to the people who work for you. Because when it comes to leadership, people tend to follow those that are true to their word, right? And, and that's really important. I think with your team, you know, I know that you're having meetings and you probably consistently convey the vision, right? I mean, is that something that you're doing over and over and over and over and over again? Even if it changes, right? Yeah. Hey, this is the new vision, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> it, 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 it can continuously change. Is that something that you uh, practice regularly? And would you agree that execution is one of those things that separate you? Um, that doesn't mean that you're different. It just means something that you focus on. Is that, would you agree? Um, yeah, I mean, on, on all accounts, and it's funny you bring up the whole vision thing because even like whenever we're hiring people, <laughs> it starts on the interview it's the or like, like the phone call. Like I physically say like, this is our vision. What's your goal? You know, and then I just sales pitch them. Like I can get you where you want to be probably more in the next two months. Wow. Let's, let's come in person and talk real quick. We'll show you how we can get that started. 
I want to talk um, about that because, but, and I, I keep breaking it because these are good things. You, I know you just jump over them, but I'm like, dude, let me get in there and let me talk about that because when it comes to hiring, you're setting the tone early. You're saying, listen, but first thing I'm sure that you do before you convey the vision is that you're finding out what their motivation is, right? Because in order to, you know, see if your vision aligns with their motivation, that's really important. Can you talk with me through what that process looks like for you to, to actually qualify someone to sit in front of, cause you're not just going to throw your vision on anyone, dude. You're not going to, they say the old saying is, man, you're not going to throw your pearls at swine, you know? So it's ultimately like, how are you, how are you doing that? So, um, it's, it just starts with that initial phone call. So like the second I get somebody's information, uh, I get them on the phone. Goal number one, once they're on the phone, all, all you need is five minutes. And, um, you basically just say, Hey, I just want an informal conversation. I'm, I'm really curious on what is important to you and the work that you do. You know, and then I just let them talk. And then once they give me what's important to them, I'm like, cool, this is what we're doing. Giving you backstory and kind of like where we're at, what we did last year, what, what we're going to do this year, and just talk about the opportunity. After I do that, I challenge them. I, I usually just say, hey, um, I know you said this, this, and this is important to you. This is where we're going. Um, the only people that we're even considering taking on the team are people that are comfortable pushing themselves, challenging themselves and getting uncomfortable because we're going to push you. We want you to push us and um, whatever your goals are, I want to be really invested to make sure I get you to where you want to be. And at the same time, be conscientious of what makes you tick. And like whenever it comes down to it, like if it's freedom of time, if it's insurances, if it's benefits, if it's just a great team culture, we're going to make that environment for you. So uh, are you comfortable having another conversation towards that, or does this not sound like a good fit for you? So that's how that conversation goes. Early. Yeah, I mean, it's really mm -hmm. like you're lining yourself up for for a victory if they actually get in front of you, and then from there, you know, really just again going back to that vision is conveying the vision, but holding true to it because there are some business owners that have the grandiose vision. Man, they want to tell their team the big plans. They want to tell the people that they have as potential workers that they're going to align that vision with what they want, but they never follow through. So it kills their credibility, which kills the culture, which creates resentment, which is a downward spiral. So how high do you hold in regard to these promises that you're making in terms of your value system? I'd like to know that. What is, what is that? Like how important is that for you to deliver those promises? Um, honestly, it's more important than anything. Cause like you can get as much, projects as you can in the backlog. Um, you can get as much people in the door to start like physically going on sites, but if no standards held, you are right. The foundation crumbles really quickly. And the reason why I wanted to give everybody a glimpse of what our backstory was in terms of like me being in a really rough spot with our company, because we were there, we felt it. We did not keep our word on anything. Um, they immediately lost trust. They stopped executing and it was just a snowball effect from there. I take that in such high regard, man, because humans are highly motivated individuals. If you run into somebody that that is a motivated individual that wants to hit that next level and you are bold enough to make a promise or bold enough to can or to sell them on your vision for Bella's Army or premium painting, then you better be bold enough to deliver. And if you have a bad habit of not executing, I can easily pinpoint why your company isn't successful. So like, you know, it's like, I, 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 cause I can, I can, I connect with you on that level because I, I don't make promises. I can't keep, I don't over promise, but I'm very, very careful with the promises that I do make. Um, and I do deliver on those promises. And that's something that my team has really, I can feel that they know that, you know, and, and, and that gives me a lot of credibility and it allows me to be strict when I need to be strict. It allows me to use, my quote unquote power as their boss to get things done when we need to get them done. Uh, but it just makes it a lot easier. So thank you for elaborating on that, man. That's another value that's important to me. For, for sure. And, and um, I have one comment too, because um, the scale process, you cannot get to a certain point unless you have high performing individuals. And the only way that high performing individual, the individuals want to join your team is if you're structured, organized, if you can sell them the vision, because they all want to do great things. And if they can sense that, which they can sense that pretty darn easily, yeah. um, they will not uh, fancy a conversation. And if you hire somebody that has that vision, like say they want to be PM, 
um, start, and start starting that as painter, they can see the progression path and they might be doing a painter's work like an apprentice or like an advanced painter, but they're giving you a project manager work ethic. So later on, it becomes high, easier to hire because then you're not looking for a project manager. You already have one. You're just developing and that person can help facilitate growth for everybody else new coming in. And you're working your way top to bottom instead of, instead of bottom up. And I think yeah. that's been the main, the, the main game changer. Yeah, man, absolutely. To know that, uh, and, and my, one of my last comments here is, as our time is coming to a close is that, uh, you know, I try to create a business and I'm, and you do the same where it's a celebration to get hired by my company. It's one of those things that, you know, it might be funny, but you know, the person comes home and, and talks to their significant other and says, you know, Hey, Hey, I, I had a great interview. I'm excited about this opportunity. Um, and, and to me, it's just, it's amazing to be able to create that, uh, that, that experience. I was on the receiving end of it as a child. Uh, my dad, you know, got hired by a great company and, you know, we kind of had a little family celebration. I saw what that felt like as a kid. So, you know, on a, on a more intrinsic level, um, to be able to create an atmosphere of growth of, of something different, you know, in, in an industry where that's not, in much of a high regard, essentially a lot of people see the workers in these industries as just a means to an end. But if you invest in them, you can really create something special. I think that's what you're on your way to do, man. I really appreciate your time, Brian. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, Tanner. I, I always appreciate you. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll have to do it again, man. And and if anyone's interested, um, Brian is giving, uh, 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 putting together a really good system, painting system blueprint, and we have it scrolling on the ticker below painting systems, blueprint.com. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, it would be a great idea for you guys to just, just hear what he's got to say based off of this conversation. I'm sure you learned something and imagine if you're getting one-on-one -on -one training of the guy's system, uh, who, you know, dude, looking at you, it's what's today, Wednesday, you look calm, cool, collected, and that's what, that's what you should be. So if you're not calm, cool, and collected today on a Wednesday afternoon with jobs running, then you have no excuse not to go check this guy's website out. Thanks brother. Yep. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate right, it. Man. Great talking to you. See ya.